Hello and welcome to my post-game uh, or po <laughs> post-tournament recording analysis of day two of the Arena Open Limited. As mentioned in the day one video, this is day two of the uh, same friend of mine that obviously qualified for day two. Um, so I'll do, be doing the post-game analysis here, looking at the drafts and reviewing some of the mistakes we made, deck building, just go over it quickly. Basically same format as last video. Um, for those of you that are looking for someone or uh, looking for a video where someone went uh, like five or more wins, this is definitely not the video for you. I won't spoil the end result, but uh, day two didn't go as well as day one. Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, let's just jump right in and I'll let you know my thoughts on the picks, uh, opens and so forth. So first we open here and um, as you will see, the open is much worse than on day day one. So looking at the open uh, exactly, so Reckless Crew is an absolutely worthless card in uh, Limited. So that's just a dead card. Ascendant Spirit is fine, um, can be okay if you have enough uh, snow going on. I think it's okay card. I think just like B or something if you have enough snow. Icebreaker kind of sucks to be honest it just costs too much and especially in sealed where you will have a hard time getting uh, enough snow lands anyways icebreaker kraken, kraken isn't that good uh the second second half of the card so the cosmos elixir is pretty good uh, it's very good actually it's probably one of the better or probably the best card we opened here the blight step pathway obviously is not very useful unless you're playing uh, Rector. So this is the the red black land and the Raven's warning again is just okay. I don't think it's that great. The other sagas are probably much much better. Again, I'll uh, increase the playback speed here so we don't have to uh, talk about everything forever. Um, yeah, we're just checking out the cards here. Said Raven's warning is fine. Um, nothing nothing fantastic though. Definitely nothing. To write home about and reckless crew is just absolutely useless because you won't be running that many uh vehicles i don't think i don't know what that uh, if that card even has a place in <laughs> construct at this point so i was thinking we have two snow cover planes which is also a bit of a bother because uh white is not the color you want to be snow in again white isn't that deep yet again um white is just not that great overall in uh in sealed so we, in, in blue, we have an awful lot. We have the Augury Raven, we have the whole Multiverse, which are all great cards. So is the Mistwalker. Um, we're just adding in the cards that we think are playable. I don't want to talk about every single card, but blue seems decently deep. So um, looks like blue is going to be one of the main colors we're going to be playing here. Looking at black, so black again is one of the weakest colors we have here. Um, Fossil is a little bit stronger than it is in draft, I think. Um, but yeah, we're just adding in all the cards. Feed the Serpent two times is, is amazing um, in in uh, sealed. The Hailstorm Valkyrie can be fine if we get enough snow going on. Apart from that, like the black is 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 wide, uh, it's deep, but but we don't have. Um, like it, the power level isn't there overall. It's a problem with our black, I would say overall. Okay, we added a disdainful stroke here. Looking at red, like red is bl complete blank basically. There's nothing there. Um, looking green again here. It's not that fantastic. So, in all honesty, the open here was kind of bad. Like it was kind of really bad because none of the colors were that great. Um, the strongest color we have probably is black, which is one of the weakest colors. So yeah, that was the point when, uh, when we were building the deck that we thought, okay, well, this, this is probably not going to go too well the second half of the tournament that uh, on top of us, both of us not being uh, very versed in best of three at all because none of us really plays best of three like ever, um, simply because we won, bo both won uh, ranked in uh, draft. And yeah, that, that on top, I don't think best of three, um, the sideboarding is probably not that much of an issue in um, sealed as it is in, in draft but yeah overall we won't we're having the best of feelings here looking at our cards so it kind of looks like we want to go black 
like blue with snow. We do have a decent amount of snow pay uh, snow lands here, a total of four. Not fantastic, but it's probably enough to get uh, um, to get some payoffs at least. At this point, we should probably uh, get rid of the icebreaker kraken because it's not gonna be that great, like ever. Like best case scenario is currently we get an eight eight for eight. Um, yeah, that which isn't that fantastic. Um, so yeah, I think we made some mistakes uh, in the deck building. We actually realized one mistake a bit later on. Uh, I don't think it costs us really, but uh, it was wasn't the best decision. So yeah, now we're reconsidering. Okay, so we have we have a lot of um, white land going on here. Bounding gold is a good card. Master Skull is playable. So is the Axe God Braggart. Kaya's Onslaught, I think, is a little bit weaker in uh, Sealed than it is in Draft. In Draft, I actually quite like it. I think in Sealed, it's just um, a little bit too aggressive. And if we can't actually go for an aggro deck, which we definitely can't go for here, um, it's not going to be it's not going to be a fantastic card overall because you'll probably have to use it for blocking or something like that along uh, later on. Here we had a lot of decent cards for an aggro deck, but unfortunately, our red was just. A complete blank so um, there was no no way I was going for an aggro deck here but the white did actually look quite decent for aggro yeah so looking at our cards I think depart the realm probably has to go here probably one of the weaker cards we still have in here so it's the Carful Harbinger the Pilfering Hawk is fine so it's the Sand and Spirit if we are playing white which it looks like at the moment just for some Snowland Splash um, I think it's actually it's actually okay to keep the Ascendant Spirit, but I think the Carful Harbinger probably has to go here. And here was just the consideration, okay, how much do we actually want to splash white? Do we want to splash this many cards? Because adding the white does kind of add power level to our deck, um, because our power level is just not there in black. And it's, it's okay in blue for sure, but in black it's just simply not there. So yeah, we have to consider, okay, what do we want to throw out? The Death Noble Berserker and Demonic Gifts are two definitely pretty easy cuts here, I would think. Um, again, we have a bunch of cards that we're not too excited playing, like the Carful Harbinger and the Depart the Realm isn't going to be that fantastic. So we decided to add, add in the best shield mates here because probably much better than the two cards we just threw out and probably much better than the Depart the Realm and the Harbinger that I was just talking about. At least get some two drops going and the best shield mate is... An amazing uh, two drop, to be honest. Uh, two mana, two one, and you get something when it dies. It's just fantastic. Um, yeah, again, consideration what what to cut. Yeah, so we got rid of the, the depart the realm. I think that cards, it's not bad, but there are way better cards. And I think in in draft, it's much much better when the games just tend to go faster and much tighter. So the priest of the haunted edge is also pretty decent here because we do have a bunch of snowlands by adding in the white. Uh, yeah, so taking out a creature count, creature count is just about fine, uh, not fantastic, but 14 is, is a decent amount, so we can afford to throw out either one creature, or one more spell. Now if we can actually be really good here because uh, black and blue are our main colors and we should be able to get three snow lands a decent amount of the time with a total of six. So at least in the, the mid game, we should be able to um, have enough. Yeah, so our curve is a little bit messed up. We have a little bit too much on two and not enough on three, but that's just the way things usually go. In Seals, there's not much you can really do about it, and I don't think curve fixing is that important. So yeah, in the end, we decide to keep everything as is. We just throw out the uh, one best shield made because it's not that useful unless you're really aggro. I mean, it's a good card, don't get me wrong, but I think it's way, way, way better in draft than it is here. In sealed, so we decided to, uh, to ditch that. Um, yeah, so now uh, while we're checking out the cards here, uh, one, one mistake I can already mention that we made here, which we realized later on down the line, is um, we actually didn't add in... Um, we're getting some more tapped snow lands in here, I think. Uh, we didn't add in two of our gold cards, which we could have. First of all, the Raven's Warning I talked about beforehand, um, and also... Frigia, I don't know what, what, how to pronounce it, like the, the black um, white angel has a single white, so um, that would have been a good add here. You'll see later on in the video, we do actually add him. 
as we scroll by, by them quite quickly, uh, that was would have actually been a much better idea. Yeah, so you, I think, yeah, we think we add in both the hailstorm Valkyries because we realize, okay, if we start adding in the Snowlands, we should have enough um, snow to pump them at least once. And that, that remained true in the games as far as I remember, but um, yeah, in general, the, the Hellstone Valkyrie isn't that fantastic. Gotta be, gotta be honest here. Kind of a gut decision to, to put that in. I can't, I don't quite remember what we actually end up throwing out here. I think it was, we got rid of Razor Drog and a Carful Harbinger, if I'm not entirely mistaken. Yeah, so what we should have done here is added in uh, Fridger, whatever her name is. Um, remove the Icebreaker Kraken and put in the Raven's Warning and simply, if available, we could have just gotten the Icebreaker Kraken later with the Raven's Warning because that's kind of a situational card, like if you have like um, four or five um, Snowlands down, it's a card that you definitely want, if you don't, it's something that you probably don't want. Um, yeah, but I think overall here we were just a bit, a bit lost in what, uh, what to do, which colors to, to actually play because just the power level is just so bad with our open here. Like I don't want to, I don't want to be whining about the power level that we open, but it is just a big factor in CL. We, like uh, I think in, in, in draft you can influence the deck much better than you can in sealed, and here we just didn't really get much of an open, so. And then we made some mistakes building the deck as well. So that was, uh, yeah, too. We just overlooked cards. Um, yeah, a bit, a bit excited on, on, on game day here, of course. Uh, things happen. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you shouldn't, you should have just taken it more slowly. <laughs> we get an all lands hand, but we have the Cosmos Elixir and the Pilfering Hawk with which we can cycle away the lands. So it's still okay like it's not the worst uh, we have uh, we have something we can cycle away we have the cosmos elixir which with a bit of luck will get us some um some action a bit later on we do draw to feed the serpent so we have options here our opponent has of course a, a, the much better open with the 2-2 lifelink um just starts putting us under pressure really really quickly uh yeah and here i mean there's not really much we can do we can cycle one of our lands, see if we find anything better. We, I mean, we do find another colored land, which is, of course, preferable, but yeah, I mean, that maybe that was even the first mistake of the game. Maybe we should have just waited for them to attack and then, then but on the other hand, we wouldn't have blocked anyway, so yeah. Our, our opponent's just off to the races here. We, we, we missed our turn three basically entirely. They at least got to foretell something. All we got to do is tap our stupid hawk, so yeah, that just. Uh, yeah, these things just happen. I mean, not much you can do here. Okay, so now we get the Cosmos Elixir down at least. This um, kind of slows down the onslaught of our opponent a little bit. Um, the attack here, again, is fine because we're not going to be blocking anyway. Um, there's no way we're going to get over 20 life, so there's no way, uh, no need in sacking the, the Hawk for nothing. Uh, our opponent then proceeds to drop Turgrid's Lantern, which is uh, not what you want to see. <laughs> That's like one of the best cards you can probably get in sealed. Uh, I would say overall is Turgrid, Turgrid's Lantern is just amazing because it just puts a clock on your opponent. They have to um, do something against it really quickly, otherwise they just lose. So yeah, here we use the, the Iron Verdict to uh, get rid of the star one of the story seekers. Our opponent then just starts uh, adding in the lantern and this is pretty much the point. Um, where you can be pretty sure that we're gonna lose here because there's not much you can do against Turgo's lantern, especially with the slow hand that we have here. We can take damage through it a few times uh, due to the Cosmos el Elixir, but our opponent's already at 29 life and you do have to race against the lantern. And as I said, this is kind of the point where we're like, ah. This isn't a good start. <laughs> yeah, so we can feed the Story Seeker. You don't really want to be feeding a two drop though either. So we're just we're just in a pickle here overall. I mean, dropping the Mistwalker here is probably the best turn because we can then at least still double block the Seeker. Um, yeah, I think that I don't not not sure what we end up doing here, but uh, I think double blocking the the uh the story seeker or threatening the double block is the best thing we can do right here um 
yeah, so it looks like we end up doing, making the right, uh, right decision, quote unquote. Um, again, our opponent just starts spamming the lantern and it's just a matter of time before it's gonna take us down here. And uh, they don't really have to do much to stay ahead. They have enough life as a cushion to rely on. Um, there's no way we're gonna be do dealing 29 damage anytime soon and the lantern's just gonna take us down. Like that's just, <sighs> that's just the way it goes. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know what our opponent actually ended up doing here. Yeah, so they attack. We go for the double block, as we should. I think it's the right move. Um, okay, there. Ends up just taking out a Hawk, which is absolutely fine for us. Um, they end playing Res of the Dreadmon, which again just puts on pressure. Um, God's Hall Guardian as a... Uh, as is uh, a wall on uh, on the board, we we remove it here. Um, yeah, I don't think uh, there's not too much is gonna happen in this game. I don't I don't don't quite remember what what else happened, but yeah, like I said, the, the Turbis Lantern just won our opponent the game here. Yeah, basically, there's not not much we can do we can do about it at this point. It's just a matter of hanging in there. They even remove. Um, um, a mist walker, and now we don't even have a blocker that that can stop any of those reliably without trading. And the hailstorm Valkyrie is definitely not something you want to be trading for. Um, um, for, for a token, we obviously discard the Kraken here because um, there's no way we're going to be casting it anytime soon. And yeah, but. Again, I don't want to. I don't want to take out the suspense, but this uh, you can probably see by this. <laughs> this game isn't isn't gonna go our way here. It's not gonna get better from here on out. Um, opponent takes time as they should. I mean, there's no way they're losing here overall. I mean, uh, let's be real. Uh, yeah, we we can afford to block, but we can't really afford not to block. It's just a vicious a vicious circle uh, from, from here on out. Again, we we find the land, we we drop it. I mean, what else can we do? Um, we could, of course, try not to uh, drop it and discard it, but yeah, overall. So they they use the lantern again here. We have to discard the the razor Draugr, which is kind of a blank in this deck, to be honest. Uh, like it's not gonna be that fantastic. Here we make uh, the big mistake in this game. Obviously, it wasn't gonna make any difference here anyway, but we should have um, exiled the gold more champion before combat. That would have been the correct choice. Um, that way, we could have at least traded and got them down to one creature. Um, wouldn't have like been much use to us here, but yeah, they uh, they make us lose three life. Untap us, we can either now sacrifice the elixir or whatever, it doesn't matter at this point. We're gonna go down to one. Our opponents are 35, has a turret stanton on board. We have absolutely nothing to stop them here. We do at least draw the Navi, which is a decent um a decent draw, but it's obviously not gonna save us here. So yeah, I mean this is just uh yeah, we take the three damage here because it doesn't it absolutely doesn't matter at this point. Okay, so sideboarding, um, again, this is probably the weakest point of both of us, my friend and, and mine. Um, we're not very good at sideboarding. Again, I don't think it's that important. And sealed overall, even in best of three, um, the amount of times that you will actually have um, a card that's that's worth putting in from the sideboard against a specific opponent, probably like not gonna be that often, or it's just gonna be like one or two, and likelihood that you don't even draw them is gonna be high enough. So yeah, we're thinking about adding in the disdainful stroke here, um, which would have been fine, just something to counter the um, uh, to counter the the turret's lantern, but yeah. No, not much you can do here. Obviously, we decide to play first. You always want to play first, basically. Um, we get a super overloaded hand again when it comes to um, to lands. I mean, you kind of saw the contrast in the day one uh, video. You could see like we basically 
drew pretty well every game and our opponents didn't draw well in a lot of games. Um, here, it's the exact opposite, though our draws afterwards definitely are fine. I don't want to start whining about uh, bad draws uh, when it was absolutely okay here. Um, yeah, but again, our opponent just has the Story Seeker, which is such a good two drop, especially in Seoul. I, I really love that card. Like, I thought the the, the two to do Vigilance um, Cleric in Zendika Rising was already amazing, and uh, this Story Seeker is even better because it just has lifelink from the get go. Yeah, there you have again a very aggressive, very strong start here. Um, we have the option of bounding the Goldmore Champion or perhaps even the. The story seeker. Um, I think that both of those choices would be uh, okay. I think the gold mall champion is definitely higher priority. Attacking here is no use because our opponent gets a bigger life swing than us um, by doing so. And um, I don't remember what our opponent played next. If it was the the thing that just ended the game <laughs> again. So, okay, they just get live here. They don't play anything, um, which we were really happy about. Um, so, yeah, consideration is here. Build a multiverse or send in spirit. Um, to be honest, we shouldn't have played the the blue mana and probably should have just um, um, used the build a multiverse um, and hope to dig up another snow, uh, another another island. Um, but this this line is also okay. We can grow the Ascendant Spirit. Kind not the most mana efficient play here, obviously, but it's still fine. We we get a use of three over five mana, and the Kennel Master is not really going to do much here, or at least not more than the Ascendant Spirit, because once the Spirit is upgraded, it's a two three, so it can block the Story Seeker anyway. So no no uh, upside of playing the Kennel Master here, especially as the uh, Enter's Battlefield effect isn't uh, gonna have any relevance. So our opponent's on the rope. Uh, big things to think about. <laughs> then they of course drop the Kennel Master, which in turn would have allowed our Kennel Master to at least drop the Story Seeker. Um, yeah, we can't block here. It two, three damage isn't that, that bad. We get to upgrade the Spirit, which is absolutely fantastic. We even draw another Snowland. Um, which enables us to get the Ascendant Spirit all the way to max actually here um, next round, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, Blue Mana is obviously the right choice here. I don't, I'm not entirely sure what the right choice here would be if beholding the multiverse may have been better, but this is just so mana efficient that um, well, we went we went with this play, uh, which I think is fine. Like both is defensible. Um, if we should have done behold the multiples it definitely should have been before playing a land here um but i'm not entirely sure that would have been the right move i think playing just playing the kennel master is absolutely fine kennel master is just such a good creature in aggressive decks we were not aggressive at all in our deck and uh that's really what the big issue is here overall that the kennel master doesn't really add much to our deck except just being a 4-4 body which we need because we don't have any big creatures at all um yeah, so that's not what you can do here. Trading here is absolutely fine for us. Bit afraid of a combat trick. They get the Draugr Helm on board, um, which is fantastic for them. Really bad for us, obviously. Uh, so yeah, we... Behold, the Multiverse here is definitely the correct correct move again. Uh, probably shouldn't have played land before that, but it's fine. So Feed the Serpent is an amazing draw, which is why uh, the mana had to be tapped the way it was. So here we can either drop the Axe Guard Braggart or um, use the Feed the Serpent. I think, uh, or, or just hold the Feed the Serpent is actually better than just straight up using it here. Um, we could also, of course, use the Ascendant Spirit to upgrade and attack. Um, here the decision was to pass and hope for a blowout with the feed. Overall, this game is pretty even so far. Um, definitely got 
still got some good chances here. Yeah, we don't want to block here because we, obviously we could buff the spirit, but we don't really want to throw it in front of the 4-4 um, the four, four token here. That would be a bad choice. They get uh, fit on the board, which is what we should be playing here as well. Um, we realize it during the second match, uh, you, as you will see. And they get to inst they get the instant value of it, which is fantastic for them here. They get to yeah get um, get a card from the first three. So they drop another story seeker, so it doesn't really give us much information what they sh what they have here. So yeah, I think just pumping the spirit here is the correct choice. Um, I think at this point we should start holding lands just because we simply know that they have a, a Turgid Shadow. Um, but sorry, Chris, but that's something you're really terrible at. <laughs> yeah, my friend, my friend's not go good at holding lands. Uh, he kind of always drops everything, <laughs> which uh, is usually not that bad. But in some games, especially like in this one where we know your opponent has a Turgid Shadow, um, I think it's the wrong choice. Our auto tap was completely messed up here. Like I don't know what idea the auto tapper had to tap two of our black lands, but um, I well, probably wanted to keep the ascendant spirit pump up. But um, yeah, I think here uh, the the auto tapper was wasn't doing what it uh, wasn't reacting the way it should. <laughs> okay, so I think. Another mistake that we made in this game, um, we should have dropped Fridja as soon as possible. We should have just hit it with the Feed the Serpent. And I think in this turn, it was the turn that uh, it was actually messed up. Um, that where we shouldn't have... Um, we, we should have, we should have um, killed Fridja... Uh, of, I don't know, I really don't know how to pronounce it, much sooner and not have waited uh, as long as we did here. Yeah, so they played a Spectral Steel, and this this is the point. This is exactly the moment where we should have used Feed the Serpent to not give them the second trigger of Ridger, because this is going to mess us up. Um, we were unfortunate that they, just, they didn't just drop their second spell here. On the other hand, they have a 4-4 Lifelink, uh, which we kind of have to double block. Uh, it's just all in all... A bad situation again, and those two two life link is just doing so much work for our opponent. Yeah, I think these blocks are okay. A double block on a story seeker would have probably also been in a defendable position. Um, we end up feeding the story seeker here, which I think is the wrong choice. Um, looking at the, I, I felt the same way after the play, uh, after we reviewed the game after the match. Uh, I felt that that was the wrong choice. Uh, it should have been. Uh, Fridger and it should have been Fridger much much sooner. Um, again, here they get another trigger of Fridger and this is the, just the part where our opponent just starts running away with the game because they get so much value there. They get to get rid of two of their lands and get another card on hand and um, I think I remember what they drop next and it's just, no they don't. Okay, okay, so my bad. Um, yeah, again here, dropping the land, bad. Bad, bad, bad. We shouldn't have done that. That was that was a bad move. There's no, uh, in my opinion, there's no um, two ways about that. That was just an incredibly big mistake at this point. Just knowing that our opponent definitely has Turbo Shadow, perhaps even playing Skull Raid more. This card, if you're playing against Black in Cal Time, um, I would always recommend that you hold lands once you have you know you have enough for your spells and you're in top we're in top decking mode anyway here we don't have any more card draw i don't think we have any at all again here another mistake should have plus uh boasted the braggart before um before connecting to two two mistakes down and that were, were definitely avoidable Yeah, so the things are, like, we, we, we kind of stabilized on board now. We have a big threat with the x guard Braggart. We have a blocker for the Fridger, uh, which is uh, absolutely fantastic. We kind of stabilized, uh, even though we made some uh, minor mistakes here. You can definitely see, um, yeah, a bit of nervousness creeping in here, um, for sure. Um, 
a bit of frustration as well because the first first match uh, against this opponent was a a huge beatdown. Then they have the invoke the divine as well, um, which is actually not even the sideboard card necessarily. I would say in sealed. Um, they just go for the all out attack here, or basically all out attack. Everything that doesn't claim a free block, they can use the gold maw champion to tap down our spirit, which gives us no real blocks on uh, Fergie here. Again, yeah, that's the correct move. Our opponent's doing everything correct here. Um, so we can't really do much here. The blocks are all kind of. Okay, like this, this is a fine block. I think we, we definitely did these blocks correct um, considering the situation. Um, I think going down to, to three life and get uh, like getting ahead on board at the expense of um, six life here is the, is the correct move overall. Um, we do have the defenders. They of course have the huge blowout for our blocks with the rise of the Dreadmon. Um, getting them just two tokens, like which is fine, like this fine value out of that card. Um, we didn't actually top deck Narfi, which is a fantastic top deck here. Um, gotta say, kind of um, improves the the play we had last turn of dropping the land. Kind of makes it the right decision now. Though I, I still feel very strongly that that um, we drop two two lands too many here. Uh, we have enough for Narfi. We have enough for the Sending Spirit. Yeah. Our opponent then drops the Turgot's Lantern, which, yeah, is just super frustrating. They blew us out with the Rise of the Dreadmon last game. They blow us out again here with the Turgot's Lantern. This is pretty much the point where it's, uh, it's over. We have the Narfi, which is an upside because what we can do here, I think we, we do it correctly as well, um, is we, we you can bring back the, the Narfi um, pretty cheaply and just sack it again. Um, which is okay, so that's kind of a counterplay, but at this point our opponent is just so far ahead on board. Um, we're just dead on board here, basically. I don't think there's anything we can do. Yeah, we need to double block the 4-4, four -four, which, yeah, just, there's no, we don't, we don't have any, any real blocks here, so this is just, uh, So calculating, is there any block that would win us, uh, not make us die? No, there is no, I think this this is the best block we can make. But it still gets us killed, yeah. There's not, not much we could do in that game. I mean, our opponent just was really lucky drawing Togo's land on two games in a row. First game, they got it even, I think, down on curve. Second game, not quite on curve, but uh, it's always too soon when you're against Togo's land. <laughs> Okay, so game two, uh, well, match, match two, game one. Um, pretty decent starting hand this time around. Uh, kind of looking for the second swamp, which we do f find here really quickly, so we can't really complain. Good start. Our opponent only foretells something. We don't, obviously, we have no idea what that could be, um, but overall, we're in a, in a decent position here, I think. And we dropped the Ascendant Spirit with two Snowlands already on deck, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so I think the right move overall here is to drop the island, drop the ascendant spirit, and um, uh, hold up the mana to to buff it the first time to pump it up. Um, I think that's the right move simply because our opponent has nothing on board. If our opponent had something on board, it would be another matter. Then I think holding up the iron verdict would be um, probably more valuable overall. But I think this way it's, it's the right move. Um, yeah, our opponent pl plays the basalt ravager. Um, they end up targeting the ascendant spirit, which is not very smart. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Like that was the wrong that was the wrong move um, for sure. So um, here. Um, I think dropping the Exfold Braggart is the right move. What is definitely the wrong move is what we do here. We should have attacked first. Like attacking with the Ascendant Spirit is kind of a 50-50 situation, to be honest, because um, we don't even have the third Snowland as of now, so we may not even be able to grow it. Um, I don't think we intended attacking there, but we were lucky enough that our opponent did not block. 
Um, yeah, we have the perfect target acquired for the, the uh, Dragon Necromancer now. Um, yeah, there's obviously no way we're gonna we're gonna pass that uh, opportunity. And yeah, I think now that we actually did draw the third Snowland, keeping the Sending Spirit alive is uh, quite valuable. Unfortunately, our mana's a little bit messed up um, because we have to play the untapped. Snowland there, I think this is a fair trade um, because we are the ones uh, in the driver's seat at the moment, we are the aggressive players at this point. They get to kill our, uh, uh, our Sentence Bird, which is absolutely fine here at this point. Um, yeah, so we could either drop the Narfi here or the Hailstorm Valkyrie. We obviously want the Shimmer Drift Veil all on board here. Um, uh, so white source because uh, we don't have the second white source up yet. Um, I think dropping the Narfi here first is uh, is better. Uh, again, simply this is mainly due to the reason that our opponent um, has um, has nothing out at the at this point, so we can just play uh, the just want to play the creature with the most um, with the most uh, power. Yeah, and we just put the pressure on so high, we turn out the pressure so high here that a board sweep is pretty much the only thing that's going to save our opponent. And if they don't have it, which it seems like they didn't, um, there's no way they're coming back here. And I think in this, <laughs> this is where we realize that there, there are two cards that we should be playing, which we are not. Um, then we see the Raven's Warning and uh, a future and realize, oh wait, those are our colors. We should be playing <laughs> these cards. So yeah, we really messed up here. Um, though obviously in game one, I don't think either of these cards would have saved us the game. Um, but yeah, we, we should be playing them nonetheless. Um, <laughs> kind of a big oopsie there. Um, not what you want to have happened, especially in a, in a tournament with prizes on the line. Here we remove the Kraken because the thought process is we can use the the Ravens wanting to get the Kraken and we get rid of the race, the Draugr because we're not really a creature, uh, just creature type deck, so there's not really that much value that we're ever going to be getting out of it. And we, as we're not really an aggressive uh, creature deck at all, I don't think there's any point in playing it. Here we kind of get um, the perfect one to punch, uh, send a spirit on one, uh, pump on two. It's just a fantastic way to start off the game. Really lucky here, obviously, with the snow um, pull. Our opponent uses the part of the realm here, which is... Just a wrong play in my opinion. Like if you really want to use it, don't use it on a one drop. And the other thing is use it on our turn, not on your turn. Let us play something else first. Uh, like if they would have waited, we would have probably just pumped and then they could have bounced it. This way there is no real tempo swing. They just waste a card and two mana for not really gaining anything. Um, so yeah, this, that would be my tip. If you, ha if you have Depart the Realm, um, Use it a bit later and don't don't use it this early. I think this is just uh, not not the right not the right move. Right, quite simply, I don't think that's. Uh, I mean, if you disagree, if you find reasons why that could be the right move, please do let me know. But here again, they kind of waste two spells on a one one, um, and they waste a total of five mana on a one one that was cast twice, which is not where you want to be at. <laughs> So yeah, um, here unfortunately we're missing the second black mana, otherwise um, the Feed Serpent would have been the perfect move here. Um, just to draw another card, uh, hitting the Arbor Raven, which is a really strong card as is. This way is also fine, we miss out on drawing one card obviously, um, but uh, uh, Iron Verdict is a, a card that's uh, much less valuable. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, so we're considering, okay, what what could be useful for us next turn? Um, they don't really have that much left over in our colors that could be useful. Um, so I think we go for the Disdainful Stroke here because it's probably the only card with an upside. And as the next turn is more likely than not, they're going to play something with converted mana cost 4 or greater. I think the Disdainful Stroke is just... Uh, the correct choice here. Um, we could have just not pulled anything, but 
I'm not sure that's the right move. Here we get the Master Scald. Uh, we get to return our Raven's Warning, which is just fantastic. We could have also just added a Swamp on top that maybe have been the right move here so we can cast the Feed the Serpent next turn. Um, but our opponents on one card in hand and one card foretold and we have uh, three cards basically still in hand, one of them being a double draw spell. So yeah, it's just fantastic. So they dropped that Doomscar Titan here without getting any value out of it. I mean, it's understandable because they kind of need a defender for a Master Skald, but definitely not where you want to be. So I think now looking at this match again, the right move uh, would have not to be play hold, Behold the Multiverse here. Um, but perhaps play the Raven's Warning or um, yeah I think uh, foretelling would have been better here and just playing the Raven's Warning again um, but I don't think it's that wrong overall like here we just take the hit because we are quite far ahead if they want to leave themselves this open. Um, it's good for us. Yeah, so I think here it's just a clear drop the Raven. We want to get the most value out of our Raven's Warning and the more flyers that can hit our opponent, the better this card is. None of us actually played any decks, constructed decks with this card, so I think, yeah. It's a bit difficult. Here we, we decide to go for the Valkyrie because we uh, realize we have enough mana up to um, to uh, buff it, which can then kill the Mistwalker. And they have to put in a lot more mana into the Mistwalker to trade and then we have to, uh, to, to force them to put in mana for a trade. Yeah, so we hit Pretty good target with the Stainful Stroke. We want to keep our dominance in the air, which we obviously can keep like this. Um, we drop another Hellstone Valkyrie and at this point it's looking like we just want to basically take over in the air. I think dropping the Raven's Warning um, is probably the right move here. I may even want to go and get a land at this point because it's not, as I said, there's not really that many useful cards on our sideboard that we even can play. Yeah, I think Again, the right move, as always, is to attack first. Um, we attack with the Valkyrie. Uh, one, we could afford to buff here once and still play something, but we decide this way it's better. Um, keeps their attacks closed again. No way they can get by that Valkyrie without losing their Mistwalker. Um, their attacks on ground are looking pretty awful as well. They get to boast here, of course, but they have to trade their creature. They just hit a, a swamp, which I'm thinking our opponent's probably flooded here, um, pretty much. So yeah, we're quite quite lucky in that regard. Yeah, they they have so much mana open and nothing they're doing with it, so they're probably kind of flooded. The Cosmos Elixir is just an amazing pull off the top. Yeah, we just attack with one here, um, just keeping one back. I think we could have probably played more aggressively overall, but uh, probably should have attacked with both. So yeah, they decided to put in um, all their mana here to trade, uh, which is fine. This kind of again goes to show that they probably don't have anything in hand. Um, we still do three damage, so you get to trade one. Oh pretty much even value creatures we still got three damage through so yeah our opponent's just super flooded here they have the cinder heart giant which is fantastic but a little bit late um we take this tray because we want to stay near the top end of our life um we have to feed the serpent for the cinder heart giant and this just kind of seals the deal here i mean there's not much they can do here yeah so we dropped the raven's warning first um then we send our giant. We wanted to test for counter spells, but obviously with one mana, there's not much counter spells that we'll have here. We even get to draw another card, which is a bounding goal. And at this point, this 
game looks like it's in the bag. Our opponent agrees. Yeah, there's not much they can do there. So, yeah, I think I think our opponent was a bit flood, uh, flooded there. Um, that's on the second in the second game. Um, yeah, took some questionable trades as well, but that's fine. These things happen. I think there are a lot of mistakes made. Yeah, check checking all the wins here <laughs> would have been nice. Okay, so what we did in between those two games is we rebuilt the deck. I won't show it again because we just did it in sideboarding. Basically, what we did in sideboarding uh, between those last two matches uh, is the same thing we did we did right here. We um, removed the the Kraken and the Razor Draugr and instead put in uh, the Raven's Warning and the Furja. Um, yeah, I think that, like I said, that should have been done much earlier. Yeah, here we go with a, an early Raven. Just a fantastic way to put pressure on board. Our opponent has the instant answer. We get stuck on three mana, which is really awkward. Like everything after four is fine, basically. We get stuck on four mana most of the time. You should be pretty much all right. But on three is kind of like an awkward mana point. Our opponent, of course, has Nico, Aris, uh, a bunch of things to to drop we have to play our behold the multiverse here because we're just not finding the land drops the valkyrie is not what we're looking for anyway we finally get another land down um yeah the priest down decent removal especially with three snow lands probably pretty much anything they're gonna play we can probably get rid of here they just drop the pack mate and uh of course they have the perfect answer here with um the struggle for Scampha, which kind of leaves us high and dry here, to be perfectly honest. Um, yeah, we away down doesn't kill it anymore. Shadow's Verdict is pretty much the only way that we can kill the, the pack mate at this point. Kind of awkward, because way down has just become useful, useless in one turn. Yeah, here the, the tapping was wrong. Um, we should have tapped, yeah, the swamp and uh, whatnot. So we, in case our opponent does not attack, we still have the send spirit open. Um, yeah, Nico Aris and uh, Zaro's pack mate combo is actually pretty good as well. Um, our opponent doesn't want to do that here, so we yeah, we drop the iron verdict, which is a pretty much uh, the most value you can get. Yeah, but Nico Aris dropping two Cyril's pack mates. Our opponent's just so far ahead when it comes to value on board. Now they have the Avalanche Caller as well. Uh, yeah. We do get another Snowland though, that's fine. So here's the question Avalanche Caller or, or um, pack mate. I think it's kind of a close call. But overall, we, we decide for the caller here. I'm not entirely sure this was the right. Right call, but uh, yeah, those lands can get out of uh, out of control. We don't know how many snow lands our opponent still has in the deck. If they have like two, three more on hand, or are gonna drop them soon, uh, it was definitely the right choice to get rid of the avalanche call. Is such a strong card, especially if you are ahead on board. The card is just gonna carry you to victory. So you can put so much pressure on your opponent so quickly. Like round three, you can be hitting for five every round if you attack with a land and and the caller itself. Uh, just, yeah, no way we, we could really do much against that. Our opponent has another bound in gold, which, yeah, kind of sad for us here. They drop it on Descendant Spirit, which is fair enough. They just want to keep their Nico Aris around, understandably. Just want to, yeah, get all the value from all these shard tokens. They have four easy draws uh, out on already. We kind of have to deal with the Nico Aris because they'll just run away with the game and card advantage here if we do not, but there's no way we're getting through here. Uh, yeah, we decide to take the damage here in hopes of actually attacking back with the X, uh, with the Braggart, which looks like we finally do get the chance to do here. So things are kind of looking up a little bit now. Finally, we managed to get rid of the Nico Aris. It was around for so long. Um, yeah, I think pumping here is the wrong choice. The right choice is to play Draugr Helm. Um, in my opinion, just because it's more mana efficient. But 
this is actually not it's not more mana efficient this is also fine uh yeah this yeah this is a pretty good turn uh, my bad that would like what, what you saw now i think was the, was the right choice yeah our opponent goes for behold the multiverse so they definitely have the card advantage on their on their side here and with all those tokens out behold the multiverse they can just basically draw their entire deck Yeah, opponent drops the Burks Rider, which also really strong here, of course. We just attack here because we have the opportunity for a blowout. Um, unfortunately, our opponent blocks with everything, which means that we don't actually get the blow. We just get to kill two of their creatures. But I think it's still a good trade, the Burke Strider for the um, um, the Braggart is an okay trade for us here. And then we get to put another creature out, so I think things are looking definitely okay here. When, I wouldn't say we're, we're ever so slightly ahead on board, um, but our opponent just has so many shards that with the card advantage that they'll get in hand, um, especially with the possibility to scry one every turn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not gonna be fantastic. They probably put this, yeah, they put this on the pack mate, just simply tag a four, four blocker. And then they use Marie, Marie the Frost just to make a bigger pack mate. You can't really afford the trade here because this is the biggest creature that's going to be killed if we do. We draw our own bound in gold, which is fantastic. Um, getting rid of the pack mate is probably a decent move here. Yeah, we, we exile them. The pack mate. Then we have free attacks, basically. And then we still have a bounding goal left for their 4 pack mates. So we are now finally really ahead on board. Um, not, again, still not by much. Um, and with us knowing that they can draw an awful lot of cards, we know we're under a lot of pressure here to, to close out the game. They use their mirror leg to copy their pack mate again, which is also a really good move. Then they drop a bound in gold. It's their third bound in gold. Like, you gotta be crazy lucky to drop this much. Here, there's nothing we can do because we can attack, but they, they'll just hit us back for more. And as we are behind in life, things aren't looking fantastic. And then they drop their fourth bound in gold. And this is the point where you just tilt completely because our opponent has four bound in golds in a... Like, that means every pack... No four of their packs at least had a bounding gold in them i mean what are you supposed to do about that they just had so much removal they just bound and gold our and our entire our entire board that was just super unlucky again i think here there are no real sideboarding options the sainful stroke is something that you could just consider running um main board anyway we decided to put in depart the realm i thinking about it at least because we do know about the fight spells and uh, it's kind of a blowout for struggle for scam farm. Yeah, way down isn't looking fantastic here. Way down is generally not anywhere near as good as in in sealed as it is in in draft, um, my opinion. But yeah, just has a hard time finding targets here. We throw out the the car for camera master simply because we kind of come to the decision that we are not the aggressor in this matchup as we probably not the aggressor in any matchup <laughs> so yeah it's down to the wire uh, down to the, yeah i'm down to the wire on this game um starting hand is not fantastic but not awful either so yeah i can definitely keep this and get started our opponent has a lot to think about here apparently Okay, so I've just skipped ahead a little bit here, so nothing happened in turn one. We foretell the rave in turn two. Um, we do have a four mana, which I was talking about beforehand, which is like kind of the critical point here, what you want to reach. Um, 
Of course, we love one of our, our white sources, which we do actually top deck there right away for our Fedra, which is fantastic. Yeah, things are just looking fine here so far. I mean, we get a free attacking with our Raven. We get to drop our, our Hellstorm Valkyrie. We have two flies out on board, two things that they really have to deal with. They bounce a Raven again. I'm not too high on Depart the Realm. And then they proceed to drop the Essica's Chariot, which is just awful for us. <laughs> no other way to put it. Like, this card is broken. Uh, the Chariot is just absolutely broken um, in, in Limited. In draft as well as in sealed, it's just a fantastic card. We had it obviously in our day one deck, so I know exactly how good this card is. <laughs> and in this few draft decks as well, and you're just yeah, just happy if you if you open that card. It's just super strong. And they just start putting out the power creatures. They even get to um, man the the chariot with their with their outrider. Yeah, and then this is kind of the point where I think, okay, this is not really what you want to do. Like, obviously, removing the chariots, we don't really have much choice in the matter to be to be uh, to be clear here. But um, they still got value out of it. They got three two two tokens and a removal out of one spell uh, for four mana, and they made us pay three mana for removal so just uh, pure calculation that's just such a huge advantage and that's why the chariot is so amazing and sealed uh, and limited uh, if you yeah if you can't deal with it while before it attacks the first time it's really bad okay so here we decide okay with the fruit uh, with the fridge out we can perhaps um play aggressive obviously they probably sideboarded in the broken wings um we're hoping with the life gain to next turn for us uh to to put this uh, the favor in r um on, on us again but yeah they they removed it right away obviously that's uh, the right choice yeah i think here attacking is the wrong choice definitely shouldn't attack here um, one more land and the priest can get rid of the mist walker. They have another pack mate. Uh, well, uh, it's actually the first pack mate this game, I think. Um, but still, pack mate is just fantastic. They open at least two of them, which is amazing. Like green is so what color you want to be in anyway, and having two two pack mates to go along with your uh, with your chariot is just gonna gonna be amazing. Um, yeah, so just looks like our opponent has just has a better deck than us. Let's Put it quite frankly, the first opponent definitely looked like that a way stronger deck than us. This opponent is looking the same way again. Again, we are in two of the weaker colors, being black and white. Um, those are probably the two weakest colors in the set overall. Um, we kind of forced into them. Even now, in hindsight, looking at um, the the deck building process, I'm not sure we did anything wrong per se. It could have. I, I think it was okay. Yeah, they should probably just attack with the Grizzled Outrider and the Mistwalker here. I don't know why they would hold back their, their Mistwalker. Yeah, so we can have a pretty good recovery turn here overall. We get to clean up the board. Uh, it's now in our favor again, ever so slightly, I would say. But the Lindworm just puts an end to all of that. Uh, at least we draw Behold. We can hope for something useful. Yeah, we don't have anything to get with the Master Skull, so Master Skull is off the table. Um, the Raven, I think, should be a keep, uh, but it's a tough decision because the the Raven doesn't really deal with the Lindworm that well. Yeah, so here we actually kind of get decently lucky. We. <laughs> Uh, draw the land to go with the raven so we can drop it here and stabilize the board now our opponent has another pack made and things are just gonna get out of control from here like this uh, we were empty we played out all our gas they have a bergstrider they can force us to um to block really badly here 
with the Burgess Rider, just, yeah, like, this is pretty much the point where the game is over, like, um, what, what, what can we do here? We can't let the Lindworm get through because we're just dead if we do, so we have to kind of double block it, but double blocking it leaves us dead. And then we top deck an island just to top it all off. I mean, it's not no way that we're going to win anyway, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we go down to a total of minus 13. And unfortunately, that was a, a very, very fast day two for us. Um, we were very disappointed with the result. Again, I mean, there's nothing you can really do here. I think obviously we made some mistakes. I hope I... I pointed them out decently um, here for you, so something that you can avoid in future. Um, but uh, like, you can just basically just put it down to we opened much worse than our uh, the two pawns that, uh, that that defeated us. It both just had way better cards in that deck than we did. Um, all of our rares were like none of our rares were a bomb. Uh, two or three were medium and some of them were just like I think at least two of them were absolutely unplayable a borderline three was kind of unplayable so that's sometimes what it just comes down to in sealed that's why in my opinion sealed is a much lower skill format than uh, the draft I mean I'm not saying that I'm uh, that we were skilled enough that we would have perhaps won in draft but um, I think in draft you can most of the time you can uh, if your deck's bad you can just put a down to you drafting bad, so that's why I think draft is overall a better format, and I'm really hoping that they do um, that they do bring uh, draft tournaments to Arena real soon, because that is something that I really uh, look forward to, because I play an awful lot of draft. I mean, if you if you've seen some of the videos on my channel or seen my channel, you know I draft a lot, and that's only like a, a, the the tip of the iceberg of the drafts that I play. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I hope, like, I don't want to rant off for you forever. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sorry that the um, that is only post recording, but I really want to concentrate on the games here, and uh, obviously my friend does as well. Um, yeah. Um, with that being said, I still hope you enjoyed the video. Um, got some value out of it. Some learned from maybe some of our mistakes. Maybe even learned from some of the things that we did correctly here. Um, I'll probably, both of us will probably um, be, uh, try in any of the tournaments that's coming up. We'll definitely give it a try, any of the, the limited tournaments coming up. Um, I won't be spamming out like uh, 10 entries per per, um, uh, per cycle, maximum of two. This time we both just went for one. One of us got on, uh, got into the next round, so that was good enough for us. And I think that's pretty much the way. We will keep going from here on out. Um, in draft and maybe uh, more willing to put, put more gems on the line there. Okay, but that being said, um, thank you ever so much for watching the video. If you did like it, please leave me a like and subscribe, give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comment sections down below if you appreciated my friend giving us uh, the recording from his games. Um, I sure do. And yeah, thank you so much for all the views that I got on the first, uh, on the day one video. I uh, really appreciated it, it um, made, made me real happy. I think it's the best best performing video I had so far so yeah that was uh, that was a real uh, real motivator for me anyways thank you so much for watching take care and I'll see you in the next video don't forget to like and subscribe until then